Capturing and analyzing steelhead enhanced auto discovery. Welcome, my name is Maximus, and in this video, I'll be demonstrating to you a pair of hosts, a pair of steelheads, and a WAN in between communicating with each other and, in fact, setting up the enhanced auto discovery inner channel. In fact, it's a series of inner channel connections you're going to be seeing with the help of TCP dump and Wireshark. Let's get started. I will specifically capture traffic from the WAN interface of the branch steelhead, which means I should see in a perfectly clean environment where there are currently no connections between any hosts or these steelheads, the initial SYN probe egressing the WAN interface, coming back from the other side of the cloud, assuming steps uh, step four occurs, which is the peering rules and the forwarding of the probe. We also should get a forward notification, step three, ingressing on the WAN interface, assuming after the probe is forwarded in step four here, the server synax back, that server does exist and the HTTP service is running. We should then get from that server side steelhead, the probe response. So three enhanced auto discovery packets, one egressing from the branch to the data center with the client and server IPs in the TCP IP address headers, and then two Synax coming back in, in the various enhanced auto discovery states, the forward notification, the one moment, please, I'm going to forward the probe on step three, and then the, I got the Synax from the server probe response, you and me are going to peer. Following those three packets on the WAN, that capture should also then see an egressing SYN from the actual in-path interface of that branch steelhead to the in-path interface of the data center steelhead to the optimization port 7800, followed with an ingress SYN ACK from aforementioned hosts and the ACK to and from the aforementioned hosts again. I want to see that. But I also then want to see another inner channel connection set up, the out of band splice from in path to in path, random source port, different from the connection used for the optimization, random source port. And then I'd also like to see 20 egressing connections for the connection pool, which are used for latency optimization by reducing the number of round trips during the connection setup, as described in earlier lessons. So there's roughly 22 connections that will be set up amongst other gyrations and the WAN interface of this branch steelhead is a perfect vantage point to see all of this occurring. We will not be able to see the data center steelhead traffic because we won't be uh, on his interfaces because we won't be performing packet capture and analysis on them. However, if we do see 22 connections roughly 22 connections on this WAN interface of the branch steelhead, you can safely assume that the data center steelhead performed the expected tasks, which is inspecting its peering rules, receiving synax, sending probe responses, allowing inner channels to be built, and so on. So that is the task we're going to perform, the demonstration. And so f let's first off confirm that between these hosts, this branch PC, which is currently where we're sitting, there are no connections starting with, let's see if there's any mapped drives, and there are no mapped drives. The net use shows no connections. We have no HTTP connections. Further, we can verify this by going into the branch steelheads reports, networking current connections report, and looking at the table at the top of the current connections report, the summary table, which enumerates the number of connections, whether they're optimized, half open, half closed, and so on. There are zero connections traversing this branch steelhead. We can do the same thing for the data center steelhead. Reports, networking, current connections. And we should see the same, zero connections, correct. Very good. Let's now go back to our branch steelhead, go to reports, diagnostics, TCP dumps. Built into the steelhead is the TCP dump utility written by Dr. Steve McCann, uh, who went on to become one of the founders of Riverbed. 
let's create a new TCP dump capture name looking for probes and we'll capture on WAN 00 and just to revisit WAN 00 that is this interface in our branch steelhead WAN 00 we are not performing the capture on LAN 00 we don't need to we could but we're going to skip that we'll use a 30 second duration that's plenty enough time we can schedule the capture for later I don't want to do that I'm going to do it now but first before I click add and initialize the TCP dump I'm going to stage the connection the HTTP connection to that remote HTTP server by simply typing in its IP address 10.1.38.105 I'm not going to press enter I don't want to initiate that traffic I just want to have this staged because I've got a narrow window of time to get this done I will now go back to my branch steelhead TCP dump UI click add and within a second or two the TCP dump capture will begin and it's now running go back to my tab and press enter perform a directory listing very basic HTTP transfer and that's it it's done the enhanced auto discovery process is done let's take a look by stopping the selected capture we'll let that we don't even need to wait the full 30 seconds and there's our cap file now before we do that let's let's go ahead and revisit our reports networking current connections report and in here we see no connections <clears throat> that's because it was an HTTP connection which is a short-lived connection and the reports networking current connections doesn't show it because we missed it if it was a persistent connection like a mapped drive we would likely see that here we will see that behavior in other lessons back to our TCP dump notice the file name formatting is hostname underscore interface underscore descriptor looking for probes I'll click that and save that file to my local disk in the downloads folder open that folder double click that file and associate that file that cap zero file to the Wireshark application which is located in the Wireshark folder Wireshark written by Gary Coombs of Ethereal which went on to be purchased by Case Technologies and Case Technologies went on to be purchased by Riverbed so the bloke who wrote Wireshark it works for Riverbed there's no shortage of people who are aware of networks running our company okay so here's our WAN 00 looking for probes cap file got a lot of stuff in here let's resize this and in order to filter packets of interest I'll use the filter function and use a simple uh, filter where by asking the filter to show any packets where the TCP dot options field contains the number four and the letter C in consecutive order doesn't mean it's specifically the riverbed probe there could be coincidentally the number four and the letter C hexadecimal in there from a date a time anything but also any packets that have the options field with the number four and C will be riverbed probes and sure enough we see a filtered list and the first three are the packets that we're looking for let's go ahead and filter out this stream right click follow TCP stream and we see now sin probe from Windows 7 client PC that's our workstation we initiated the HTTP connection from to that HTTP server 
the random source port 61313 to destination port 80. We can see that in the middle pane, the TCP protocol source port 6313, destination port 80. And it is a SYN with a probe. Be sure to watch the remaining videos in this lesson. Thanks for watching.